but there's just so many more 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 brands out there now and not just the Rubbermaids, the Anchor Hawkins, the Sterilites that are the big beasts outside of Tupperware. More and more there's private labels. You know, Target has gotten into that space on their own. Walmart has gotten into their space on their own. Amazon has their basics line. One of the things that's also interesting about what's going on now is that they always targeted the top end of things, right? So people who wanted something that was good and something was going to last would be looking for a Tupperware item. But more and more, a lot of the younger people looking for that top end item are looking for a different material, moving away from plastics looking for something that's got that sustainability edge on it, you know, glass containers, stainless steel containers, um, silicone containers, all those have a profile that's more attractive to the younger generation than a classic plastic Tupperware. You know, uh, a lot of companies that have legacy brands like this have gone the way of licensing. Um, I know that domestic manufacturing has been something that they've shut down, but licensing the brand into something that's related, what else do their customers buy, being able to leverage that brand into other things that home consumers are looking for and not just a food container or something for their kitchen might be a way to build back. In 2023, plasticware demand in the U.S. was $5.7 billion dollars. Plastic wear demand is forecast to rise 5.4% per year to 7.6 billion in 2028. This growth is staged as the industry shakes off some of the volatility of recent consumer spending cycles. Because we're having such growing behavior and is, is such a greater need uh, for food storage, what that has is increased the competition. Not only the number of companies playing into this space, but also the different types of materials and different types of food storage. So it's just a greater demand to solve the new needs that the consumer has. All of COVID really has had a dramatic impact on how we eat and drink, in part because of the hybrid life that we have. Uh, we are eating more meals at home, uh, especially because we're working from home. And as such, by having more meals eaten at home, there's just a greater demand on food storage, part not only just for fresh foods, but also for leftovers. So one of the ways to make life a little bit more convenient is you will eat more leftovers during this period. So food storage has a greater demand there. So the increase in the meals, the increased need for leftovers, the increased need for entertaining, and the increased need for storage and organization really has helped food storage to grow during this period. Um, it is up 18% versus pre-pandemic. Uh, continues to be growing uh, at this stage uh, and is very, very important for the consumers.